Today, we're going to be taking a look at cordless. And no, I'm not talking about the house phone that your mom calls you from. I'm talking about a terminal-based Discord client called cordless. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of cordless, you should know that cordless is a third-party Discord application and third-party Discord applications are against the terms of service. So you might not want to actually use this with your main account there or any account that you actually really care about because there is a possibility that you could get banned. But there's all sorts of nonsense that takes place on Discord like child grooming and self-harm groups which are also against the terms of service and arguably are much, much worse than actually just using a third party application. And yet these types of things still flourish on this platform. Uh, so do this at your own risk. I'm not liable for your account getting banned because you used a third party software, but I'm pretty sure that Discord's primary purpose is to be a Chinese data harvesting botnet. So you're probably fine. My account didn't get banned for using it, so eh, the risk is probably minimal. But anyway, this is the Discord page for Cordless. I'll go ahead and leave a link to it in the description so that you guys can get to it quickly. And here you can see how the application looks. Uh, of course, yours is going to look slightly different depending on your terminal theme, since this is, of course, a terminal-based application. Unless you are literally using the same theme as this guy, then it's going to look the same. And there's a couple of options for installation. You could do a snap install if you're a dirty heathen. I don't really recommend doing that. If you're on an Arch-based distribution, then you could download it from the AUR. If you're on Windows, then you could scoop it. If you're on the Mac OS, then you can brew it. But you guys using Macs and Windows, you can just go to the Microsoft Store or the Apple Store and talk to the geniuses or whatever they call them at the Microsoft Store to help you out with that. I, the mental outlaw, I am here to do tutorials for Glorious GNU slash Linux. And the installation method that I'm going to show you is actually gonna be the build from source method. Uh, because, of course, if we build from source, then that's going to be distro independent. You don't have to be using Arch or any type of specific thing like that. It's gonna work on all distros and Cool kids that use Linux, they build their software from source anyway. Now, in order to build it from source, you're going to need Go 1.3 or higher, because obviously this application is written in Go. And most Linux distributions don't come with Go pre-installed. So if you haven't been doing Go programming, if you haven't had to build any Go applications from source already, then you're probably going to need to download and install it. If you did already do that, then you can skip forward maybe a minute or two past the Go installation steps to when I actually start showing you how to install cordless. So go ahead and head over to golang.org forward slash download and you want to just go ahead and get this archive file for Linux. And then once you've downloaded that, head on over to your terminal. And you can see that I still have it here in my downloads folder. So what we're going to want to do is unpack this archive into our USR local directory. And of course, because USR local requires root permissions to write to it or to unpack anything to it in this case, you're going to want to do this as root. So the full command is going to be sudo tar hyphen capital C, USR local hyphen XZF, and then the archive name, 
Um, might be a different archive depending on which version you download. Obviously, people watching it in the future, you're probably gonna have a later download than what I have here. And once you've done that, you then want to add go to your path variable. So you can do that with this command right here. Oh, actually, you need to also have export in the front. So you wanna do this command right here. And then there is a simple hello world script that you can uh, get on the Go website down here. So you can go ahead and write this into a directory if you want. And then you can do this step to build it to basically test to see whether or not Go is working. Um, that's not really necessary because I mean, obviously we're going to be using Go to install this and build this program anyway. So you could just go ahead and do that and that should be a sufficient enough test to see if it's working correctly. Now back to building cordless. So to build it, you pretty much just need to copy and paste um, this into, oh, this didn't, doesn't look like it copied correctly. Um, hmm, that is odd. Maybe it's because my terminal's too big. Okay, let's try doing that. So basically, you just need to copy and paste this into your terminal. Now, there is one important thing that is missing from this command. So whenever you are in your Go path and you want to do an operation that requires a Go module like this get command that we see here, you need to prepend this string, go 111 module equals on before the go get command. So type this in and you know, copy that command from the GitHub repo and make sure it looks like this, and then we're good. And this should be obvious, but you also need to have Git installed since Go is going to be utilizing Git in order to download the sources from GitHub. Now, once this is done, you'll have a directory within uh, whatever path you ran this from called Go. So I just did it from my home directory. So this is where my go is. So CD into that and then CD into another directory called bin. And normally this is where the cordless binary would be. I guess I moved it instead of copied it. Um, now chances are you want to be able to run this from anywhere. You could just you know, do that and then run the cordless binary, but you probably don't wanna to have to always CD into this directory. So if you want to make the cordless binary executable from anywhere, you want to add it to user local bin. And so now if I uh, cat that out, you'll see that, um, or not cat it, ls it rather you'll see that I have the cordless binary in here. So once you do that, you can then run it from any directory. So like if I go back here, I can type cordless and bam, I'm able to run it. Now, when you first run cordless, your screen isn't going to look like this. You're actually going to have a login screen and you'll have an option to log in either with an authentication token or with your email. The authentication token is technically more secure, but I'm not really all too concerned with securing a Discord account because again, this platform is a Chinese data harvesting ring. I'm sure that Xi Jinping probably has a text file with my credentials on his desktop. So it's really not that big a deal to me, but if you're paranoid about your security, then I guess use the authentication token. Once you're logged in, you'll want to take a look at the default key bindings by pressing Control plus K. And that way you're going to know how to actually navigate. And you could change these bindings if you want. 
Uh, you just have to hit enter on it and then you can you know, change it to whatever you want it to be. Uh, oh, let's actually just change that to regular L. I'm probably going to end up doing a lot of modifications to this because personally, I prefer to use Vim-like bindings, especially in my terminal applications. So I'll probably end up modifying these to be more like that if I really do decide that I like this application and that I really want to use it. Uh, so let's just escape to get out of that dialog button. Um, so to navigate with the keyboard to, or to navigate around in uh, this application, you could click, right? That's one option that you have to just click into whichever containers that you want, but that kind of defeats the purpose of using a terminal-based application, right? I mean, if we want to use the mouse, then we would probably just go for the standard Discord app. Uh, so to navigate with the keyboard to say the guild container, which is just your list of servers over here that you've added, uh, you can do that with Alt plus U. Oh, actually, that's my mistake. It's Alt plus S. That'll let you go over into the servers. And Alt plus U is the user container. So that's where you would see uh, all of the users that are in uh, whichever server you're in, assuming that you have a bunch of users added to it. To go to the private chat page, you do Alt plus P. And to toggle bear chat, which basically means that all of the space in the cordless client is going to be given to the chat of whatever you're in, you would do Alt plus B. But of course, I'm not uh, in that right now. Now, if you want to do things like join a server, leave a server, or create a new server, you'll need to toggle the command view. And you can do that with Alt plus period. Now, from this command view, you can type man to view the main manual page. And then from here, you'll see options for submanuals on specific topics like commands, chat view, etc. So if we do man commands, this gives us the commands to do some of those things that I just mentioned. So if I wanted to, for example, join the official Noida server, uh, we would use the command server join, and then we would use the um, identifier for that server. So it's C J Z C G E M. And then you can see over here in the servers dialog box that the Noida server has been joined. And then it's going to uh, update whenever there's like new chat messages that are coming up in that server. So I guess a lot of people are very active there right now. You can create a new server with the server create function. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a server. Let's see. I've already got a mental outlaws shill server. Um, but you know what, to be honest, you can never have enough shills. So let's go ahead and create uh, mental outlaw, oh, make sure I capitalize my name right, shills2 server for the shills. That way, if the shills get filled up too much, we can just move them over to another one. And so now here we go. You see that I now have the second shills server, shills2 and shills1. And notice how when I created that server name, when I was putting in the string, I put it inside of double quotes. So you want to make sure you do that when you're setting up your server name and that way everything's going to work correctly. You can also manage your friends with cordless. So if we go back to our uh, command window and we do, um, let's see, man friends should bring up that man page. So this page actually does need a little bit of uh, 
grammar fixes. So the friend currently command offers the following subcommands. Someone must have been a little bit drunk when they were writing that. Uh, but anyway, you have commands to accept a friend request. You can send a friend request to somebody. You can see all of your current requests and so on and so forth. So lastly, let's look at the main thing that we would want to use Discord for, which is actually sending and receiving messages. So let's go into the uh, Noida chat real quick. And so you can see how this looks. Um, now, there are quite a few limitations in here. Like when somebody sends a picture, like this GIF, for example, um, you can't actually view it. The only way that you can actually really look at this is if you have Fe installed on your Linux desktop, but that's the only way. This image viewing, it you know, this uh, application can't work with any other image viewer. So if you're using like SXIV, which is typically what I use to view images, it's not gonna work. So this is a pretty big limitation if you ask me. Um, emojis do work though. Uh, I'm sure there's emojis somewhere. Yeah, here you go. So emojis do work. Um, and of course emojis work because they work in most terminals. If you're using something like URXVT, then it's probably not gonna work correctly. Um, now for sending a message, you can focus on the message input container. So let's actually uh, go to a different server because I don't wanna spam that, uh, that text channel there. So to focus on the message input container, you want to do Alt plus M, and then you can just start typing whatever you want. So do something like that. And then hit enter and you're done. Now, if you made a mistake in the message, you can actually hit the up arrow to bring back the message that you just had there, and then you can edit it. So we'll say something like subscribe to mental outlaw, and then hit enter. And you'll see that that random text message that I had just got updated to what I wanted it to be. Now, unfortunately, you can't hit up multiple times to go to the previous, or actually, oh, I guess you can now. That was uh, not working for some reason. So let's see. Hello world, hello. Ah, okay, so hitting up does actually work multiple times. When I was testing this before, that didn't work. Um, there are other ways that you can do this though. So another way that you can edit your previous messages would be to focus on the uh, actual chat window. So I changed my key modifier to control T to do that. And then you can just scroll up this way and then hit E on whichever message that you want to edit. Uh, and then you can just go from here and then edit it however you want. And you can also delete messages. So if I wanted to get rid of this message, for example, I can just select it, hit E, and then change the message to just be an empty string. And then you'll get this uh, confirmation that comes up here. Do you really want to delete the message? And then hit enter again on delete and bam, now it's gone. So that's about it for the cordless terminal based discord client. Like I said, the features in here are very limited. There's not really much that you can do as far as administration and you can't see pictures unless you're using fe and Overall, the app is still kind of buggy. It's still under development, so that's understandable. Um, if more features were to get added to this, then I could definitely see myself using this as kind of like an IRC. I mean, generally that's what I do in Discord anyway. Um, but until then, I'm probably just going to stick with the main Discord app since it has more features. Um, there are some features that could be added to this that would definitely intrigue me. If, for example, there could be modes added like we had in Vim to make Vim keys more straightforward uh, and practical, 
then that would be great because you can't really navigate with like H, J, K, and L because, you know, of course, you're just going to start typing if you do that. Um, so you need to have something like a normal mode and an insert mode, but in cordless, you're just always going to be in insert mode. Um, I think as far as the uh, design of this goes, like the navigation, it was designed more like Emacs, considering the heavy use of the Alt key by default, uh, which is unfortunate. And there's also some real bugs in this application, uh, besides just the little, um, like the little uh, grammar things that I was showing you. Like for example, if we go back to our uh, terminal view, or our command mode rather, uh, and we bring up the man page for chat view. Oh, I'm not actually in it. Man chat view. So you see that these are the commands to, you know, edit messages and things like that. But if I were to go control K and change this, like let's change edit message to, um, I don't know, let's change it to like nine and then escape from here. And then man chat view. You see that it still has edit message as E. So if you actually do go and you change the default bindings, it's still going to list the default bindings in all of the man pages and that obviously makes them useless. I mean, the only other way that you'll be able to really maintain this is you'll have to just create and maintain your own separate main page, man pages, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Like nobody really wants to do that. Um, so yeah, cordless, it's an interesting idea. It's kind of nifty to play with a little bit, but I think it needs a lot more work until it's really usable. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Be sure to share this video with your friends, your enemies, and your neutral allies. Leave a like, subscribe, and let me know what you think about cordless in the comments down below. Bye now.